Joining me now is GB News host Darren Grimes. Darren, let's start with these leaked emails between doctors from a leading transgender healthcare body which reveal they knew that trans patients do not always understand the consequences of their gender reassignment surgery and treatments and they also admit that some patients have developed cancer as a result mm -hmm. of their hormone treatment. The revelations stem from the World Professional Association for Transgender Health files uh, uncovered by independent journalist Michael Schellenberger. He also found a clinician who was prepared to recommend a double mastectomy for a 16-year-old girl who was already suffering from liver cancer. And this is despite <laughs> he, this uh, doctor agreeing with the girl's surgeon and oncologist that her cancer was probably caused by the hormone treatment she was receiving. These revelations are so shocking, Darren. It's an enormous medical scandal and we have so many victims, so many victims uh, in the UK, the US and right here in Australia. Absolutely, Rita, you're bang on the money. And were this any other form of ideology in healthcare that was causing cancer, you can bet your bottom dollar that there would be outcry like you wouldn't believe. There would be a scandal called upon scandal, pearl clutching like you wouldn't believe. There would be lawsuits of a monumental scale. I mean, I tell you what, this W path, or uh, they have me on the war path. That's what I'll tell you that for free, Rita, yeah. because th they basically seem to be saying that gender affirming care, which is basically the affirmation of anybody that says, oh, you know, I need to have a mastectomy or oh, I need to go on to these uh, generally irreversible hormone treatments that quite clearly we know precious little about. We know a little bit more now after these damning revelations. But this is medical misadventure and it doesn't actually purport purportedly. You know, these people say that they're the gold standard of healthcare. If you ask me, they absolutely are not. This is doctors under under the guidance of this trans body, nodding along to recommending dicey surgeries for minors. As you say, Rita, we're talking about a, a radical double mastectomy for a 16-year-old girl with liver cancer. Now, cancer possibly from these hormones that they've been pumping her with in the first place. Why is there not more of an outcry about this? Why are politicians in Australia? Why are politicians in the United Kingdom, in the United States? Why are they not animated about this in a way in which they are quite mm. clearly about other uh, issues? This is my medical malpractice uh, sort of couched in the terms of medical affirmation. And I think it's really, really dangerous. This has put an ideology well above healthcare. You're 100% right, but at least in the UK, you did have an inquiry into these methods yeah. and this affirmation model, and there was some change in policy. Here in Australia, we're not even having the inquiry, and there's so little transparency around what's happening uh, with these treatments, how many kids are being treated, at what ages are they getting the hormones, at what ages are surgeries starting. Uh, uh, sadly, I think the Austra Australia is even further behind than the UK when it comes to this very important issue. Darren, the UK police force is under fire for perceived lack of policing when it comes to Palestinian protests. Uh, look at this footage where they are in huge numbers protecting a statue of... Winston Churchill as pro-Palestinian supporters gather outside the Houses of Parliament. But we know they have the capacity to be much tougher. We saw that during those uh, anti-lockdown protests. And let's look at how they police football fans. This is what you get when you're a football fan. This is what football fans get. If I get a Palestine flag out, I'm safe. Joke. Darren, you can even hear the football fans reference the police's double standards there, saying they'd be left alone if they had a Palestinian flag. The public are noticing this two-tiered policing. Why should anybody basically have any... Uh, of an understanding, of, of an acknowledgement, of a trust 
in the police that actually young women, statues, you name it, will actually be there and be protected by our police force because it's it smacks of a two tier policing. Right. We've seen that multiculturalism mm -hmm. actually uh, it ain't robust. We've actually seen what? the desecration of war memorials. We've seen jihad called for, intifada called for. We've seen uh, the Jewish people in our country be uh, attacked or violence against them be called for. You know what, Rita? We just banged up a bloke in this country for two years for downloadable stickers and a Hitler photograph in his house here in Britain. But then we had a chap in our country filmed with police standing by him, raising his fist to do a Hitler salute. And was he pursued by the police? I certainly didn't see any action. Let's move along to Rishi Sunak, hoping that uh, Jeremy Hunt's budget measures, including freezing fuel duty for another year, freezing alcohol duty, overhauling the child benefits uh, system, whether well, well, is all that going to save the Tories at the polls, Darren, that you're going to election later in the year? Is this going to be enough? It absolutely isn't, Rita. I mean, the, the Prime Minister had a perfect opportunity to, to, to cover some of the themes that we've been discussing right now. Labour Party politicians seem far more interested, Rita, in talking about Gaza than they do Britain. And Rishi Sunak had an ideal opportunity at this budget to actually present an, op a, a, an opposition to that, an alternative vision. And he just simply hasn't done that. In fact, we just announced one million quid in that budget for a Muslim memorial, a war memorial. I don't know why we need independent individual religions to now have memorials. It, the fact of the matter was we were either mm. Commonwealth nations or British nations. But look, this will not save the Tories. We are at snail's pace growth. We haven't taken robust measures. Dare I say, Liz Trussell will be laughing all the way to the bank. She's very popular in America right now. That's our former prime minister. She said, actually, we needed radical reform in this country. Rishi Sunak seems to be going along... But the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, if I can put it bluntly, and I know you Aussies pretty much love a blunt approach to things. And there is no doubt in my mind right now that the Labour Party in this country and the Conservative Party in this country are two cheeks of the same behind. Right. You are voting for the same platform, the same prospectus. They're offering exactly the same thing, which is low growth, low aspiration, and basically allowing rampant migration, mass migration to this country mm. to be utterly used and utterly abused. We need strong leaders like never before. I know you're a big Maggie fan, Rita. We need Margaret Thatcher back. If I could raise her from the dead, I'm hoping Elon Musk is going to come up with some new form of technology because I'm desperate, Rita. We're in desperate straits. This is a civilizational moment that we're facing in this country. And yet all we can talk about is cutting two pence off of national insurance in this country. It's just absurd. I feel like pulling my hair out and there's not much of it there to begin with. <laughs> now, I saw Home Secretary Suela Braverman, who, well, sorry, former Home Secretary, uh, she's come out and been quite critical of this budget. Uh, she said, uh, like you, th that this small cut is not enough. You need to incentivise work. Our tax system uh, decentivises work, she said. It could have been fixed today and uh, she had all sorts of measures. She was a uh, uh, proposing there, she's becoming more and more prominent along with Liz Truss, despite their demotion. I wonder if they're setting themselves up for a leadership challenge before the next election. That's going to be fascinating to watch. Now, before you go, I've got to ask you about this story. Uh, a Las Vegas dominatrix who claimed she kissed a 27-year-old Prince Harry... Uh, on one of his many infamous trips to uh, Las Vegas. You will remember the pictures from that trip. Well, she's now been banned from OnlyFans after teasing she had never before seen pics of the prince in the buff from their night together. Oh, I don't even know where to go with this story. What do you make of this bizarre tale, Darren? Well, do you know what? I never thought I'd say it, Rita, but actually OnlyFans must be pretty altruistic because I imagine they'd get a hell of a lot of money and subscribers out of the release of that photograph. But perhaps they know that Prince Harry himself is incredibly litigious and they'd be suffering the yes. hands of his Californian lawyers. But look, I, I don't think the world wants to see that right now. We've seen him pretty much in the buff, to be honest, because there were photographs released in the past. The Sun had those photographs here in 
Britain, released those. They were all over the internet in 2012. I don't think the world wants to see them these days. But do you know what? It's a reminder that everyone has a past and everyone's made mistakes. And perhaps this virtue signalling clown ought to look back at his past and remember that no one's perfect. And this, this idea, this vision of the world that he now has from his Californian mansion simply doesn't exist. You know, I, I, I feel for the, I fear for this woman, you know, perhaps if she's not too careful and she does release them on the internet, who knows what's going to come for her because uh, his work's drying up, Rita. Yes, and he does love a legal battle, so he could perhaps launch one <laughs> against her. But um, I, I would love to hear his excuses because, yes, he was a young man, but he wasn't a teenager. We're talking someone who was in their late 20s at this point. But uh, I don't know, does he blame white privilege? Does he blame the palace <laughs> for the uh, climate of, I don't know, to- toxic masculinity that was created that led him to do this? That that in itself would be quite interesting. Darren Grimes, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thanks, Rita.